Hey everyone, it's Rosie Bicipio with Lamaki Realty, back for another episode of Cocktails with Rosie. And I've brought back Charlie Palmazano of Liberty Law and Title to talk to us about New Hampshire purchase and sales contracts and what that looks like between the both of us. So in New Hampshire, you start with your realtor writing the purchase and sale, which is a little bit different than Massachusetts where you do offer then purchase and sale. So your agent will write out all the terms, dates, and conditions of the property. Charlie, can you start with the, uh, Absolutely. the juices? And thanks for, thanks for having us, Rosie. Oh, I really you're welcome. appreciate it. So typically, your agent writes the contract, and after it is accepted, it can be reviewed by either a title company or an attorney, and Liberty Law and Title is both. So they will review it for what? What do you review when you're looking at a purchase and sale that's already written, already signed, already accepted with terms? Right, so that's sort of the funny part about New Hampshire purchase and sale agreements, that they're typically already negotiated and signed. And so we're often asked, can you take a look at that just to make sure everything's okay? And perhaps uh, there's some sort of covenants that may be needed to be reviewed. So one of the contingencies on New Hampshire purchase and sales that you can check off if it's pertinent would be, uh, say you're buying in an association, there's some restrictive covenants and you wanna take a look at those or have an attorney take a look at those. There's a time period you're allowed to look at those to see if you wanna continue on with the deal. As well as we write in an inspection time, you know, seven days, 10 days or whatever. And sometimes the purchase and sales in New Hampshire changes after it's already been accepted. So sometimes the attorney can help us with that or it comes back to us to renegotiate. Right, and I also noticed a lot of the purchase and sales that, that you draft up, Rosie, have a bunch of different things that you'd like to see uh, the buyer have the benefit of through the process or at closing. And those are typically in an addendum, and we will look through those too. That's right. And they can be very helpful to What's you that tricky buyer. thing in New Hampshire? What's our tricky thing in New Hampshire that yeah. we need to protect our buyers for? Yeah. Something that a lot of people don't know or realize. This, is a, big, this is a big deal. Uh, it's funny, you and I have had many discussions yeah. about this over the years. It's, I think, paragraph 16. The financing clause in New Hampshire uh, is very specific as to the buyer, if they're getting financing, has to inform the seller that they indeed got the financing, that they got the written commitment for financing. And they have to provide that notice to the seller or to, to the seller's to the agent. agent yep. And if they don't do that, then the seller has a bunch of options as to whether or not they want to stay in the deal, Walk away, walk keep away, deposits, which are... Keep deposits. Yeah. That's a big one. That's right a there. big deal. And it, yeah. and it does happen. It happens so frequently. So I always would suggest someone who's really experienced in New Hampshire, take a look at that uh, purchase and sale before you sign it and make sure they draft it up correctly. And do also uh, provide the written commitment along the way. And somebody has to keep track of that. By the commitment date. Very By important in yeah. New Hampshire. I think I'd say that's the number one sticking point of the New Hampshire transaction versus the Massachusetts one. Right. What's sticking right now is this beautiful drink, and I don't know how much I'm allowed to drink. Well, it's five o'clock somewhere, Charlie. Sure is. Cheers. Cheers.